So, so this is the 24th conference, 22 of which were in Hydra. The other two, we tried something else, but we decided that Hydra is the best place, and I hope you agree with me, to come every year to this, to this beautiful island. The point was to establish Hydra as a meeting, and a meeting, an international meeting place for people from many countries, I'll give you the specifics in a, in a second, that don't, initially we were talking only about reinsurance. Now we moved this meeting to May. The weather is more stable. It is a different point in time. It is mid-year. It is not exactly renewals time. In some cases it is. But it also gives us a chance to talk about insurance and reinsurance and the many issues that, uh, that affect our industry uh, and to, to do this, uh, to have this meeting mid-year, which is, I think is an interesting time. This year, we have the record of attendance at 370 participants. And it is 370 participants from Greece and 17 other countries. So thank you for, for coming here from all over the world. And I hope that um, you find this meeting both useful and entertaining. The entertaining part, I saw some of you at 3 a.m. last night, so I think you're taking care of that pretty well. Ladies and gentlemen, the global economy, as we all know, is, is under pressure. It's always somehow under pressure, but I think this point in, in time we're facing special challenges. We're getting to a point where um, we're sort of getting used to having two major wars raging, um, some very, not very far from us, and, and markets and, and, and people sort of seeing this as sort of business as usual, which I think is pretty dangerous and, uh, and does not bode well for the future. We're getting to a point where the Suez Canal is closed, as uh, Jamie Dimon said in New York the other day, and we're getting used to that. Well, it's not business as usual. These are difficult and dangerous times. I remember when we used to say that if America sneezes, the, the world gets pneumonia, in an economic sense, of course. Now we have two, two countries that can sneeze and give pneumonia to the world, the other being China, and we have a, an economic slowdown in China with profound effects to the world economy. We have persistent inflation and the debate on whether Europe is going to start lowering interest rates and the Fed is going to stay put or not, et cetera, et cetera. There is uncertainty, but there is inflation and there is debate whether this inflation is, is core inflation or is sort of a passing kind of inflation. Nobody really knows. And, of course, we have something that affects our business directly, which is climate change and all that is happening there. At the same time, we have uh, profound changes in technology that may affect the world in positive, but also maybe in negative ways. I want to share with you that, that a week ago, uh, OpenAI, who launched ChatGPT, launched an update. Normally, an update would be something that is sort of routine. Well, this one was not routine. It makes big changes in how AI works and, and the implications for our companies and the implications also for our users, our customers, right? So, um, so these are all things that we need to deal with. It's not a slow-moving world where everything is linear and you keep going and your five-year plan, you, you know, you stick with it. The, 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 there are no five-year plans. I think there are five-month month plans, the way things are going. So in insurance, we have, of course, climate change. We have the technology that I talked about that affects everyone, but affects insurance profoundly, both from the user standpoint as well as the company standpoint. We have cyber. Cyber, a few years ago, was sort, sort of very niche. Now it is a huge growth business for us and a huge risk for us at the same time. So uh, we're selling cyber insurance. Some of us were selling personal cyber covers. 
And at the same time, we are beefing up the cyber protection departments in, uh, in our companies. We have regulatory requirements and complexity. I will repeat here something that the chairman of Insurance Europe said last year in the General Assembly. Yes, uh, uh, proper regulation and supervision are, are fundamental in a fiduciary business like insurance. But let's think about the fact that it, it, you need to form an insurance company, to start an insurance company in the US, you need 30% less capital than if you started in Europe. There's something wrong with that picture. So these are things that, um, that, uh, you know, that affect our business profoundly. Insurance Europe works very closely in Brussels with all the bodies. We now have a new Euro parliament in a week or two. Uh, again, it's a moving target, it's very complex, but the trend is for heavier regulation. And very importantly, we have sustainability targets. We are the largest investors in Greece, we are the largest investors in the world. We need to do things that protect the future of our planet. And last but not least, we are an, a not very sexy industry and we need to do our very best to attract top talent and retain top talent in insurance, which doesn't look very sexy, but is very sexy. I think you'll agree with me. So um, one last thing, and this is the, the theme of, uh, of discussions at Insurance Europe level and also worldwide. The protection gap is huge, and the protection gap does not only pertain to climate change, there's huge protection gap in pensions due to the demographic situation, there's protection gap in health because technology and the requirements of health are, are increasing exp exponentially and people are underinsured. And all of these are much worse in, in, in Greece. Coming to Greece, we should say, however, that from, we've come from being the basket case of the European Union 10 years ago, a bit more maybe. We are now uh, leading in most important KPIs in the economy. This year, and these are OECD pro projections, um, Greece is forecast to grow at 2% GDP when the EU growth forecast is 0.9%. We're looking good on many fronts, uh, and that does not mean that everything is rosy, but things are, are working and things are moving. And, and, and before I come to the insurance industry, I think it need, we need to be fair and say that this government is viewing the potential contribution of business and the contribution of insurance positively and is moving on several fronts where in the past um, there was suspicion, at least against, uh, versus our industry. Um, however, and uh, we're happy to have you, Mrs. Minister, with us today, we need to say that the way things are changing, keep doing what you're doing, but we need more and we need it faster, much faster. So in Greece, Every KPI you look in insurance, we're at about a third to a quarter of the European averages. So that tells you the entire story about protection gap in Greece. It is much worse than it is in the rest of Europe. There are 50 companies that are operating. Market turnover is finally again over five and a half billion, evenly split between life and non-life. But we should note that it took us 15 years from 2009 to last year to cross again the threshold of 5 billion. So the market is finally taking off and we think this time is gonna take off for good, but uh, we are nowhere yet. We paid 2.2 billion in claims. We have 17.4 billion in investments. Um, I think we are all happy as insurers that last year, the year of the largest natural catastrophe in Greek history since 1990 anyway, when, uh, when we started tracking uh, the proper way. 
and that was Daniel. Daniel came after the big fires. So I think we're all happy because we did our duty. The job of an insurer is to pay the claim when something happens. And that's what we did. Our industry, with Daniel only, paid over 400 million euros. It is important to note that most of that money went to larger companies. So the average guy on the, on the street was uninsured, and that is also telling. But still, we paid, and we paid promptly, promptly. Uh, we paid it with advances in many cases. So we did our job, and I think this is reflected in, in the opinion of the people in the, in the affected areas, the opinion they hold of insurance. At the same time, we should remember that there are estimates that Daniel cost was between two and two and a half billion. So we paid 400 million. I don't know how much the government is going to pay and when, but I'm sure it's not going to be a billion and a half. So it's clear that we need additional cover from the, from the private sector to cover the protection gap. This is true in every country. This is not Greece only. And there is another point that um, I should make here. There is capacity in Greece. There is, there is sort of an overriding, um, no, not an overriding, there is a rumor going about that um, if insurance were to become mandatory, we weren't, be, we weren't gonna be able to insure Everybody, this is not the truth. There is capacity, there are insurers here among us. There is capacity, in some cases, there need to be solutions to be set up, uh, pools, etc., etc. But it's nothing that has not been done in other countries, okay? So um, I want to make it clear that the industry is both trustworthy and their solvency true, experienced with the capacity and with the proper people to do the job. At the same time, the government, for the first time, instituted last year a 10% reduction in property tax if you insure your home for NATCAT. This was um, extremely important semantically because it was the first time that the government is giving the message to people that they need to cover privately in addition to what the state can offer you. We think the 10% should be higher uh, and we're optimistic that the government will re will relook at that as time goes on. But on the first year, 290,000 residences took advantage of this tax break. Uh, the other point is that um, the prime minister, who uh, has explicitly said that he's aware of the protection gap and the fact that there needs to be public and private sector cooperation, announced last year that companies with sales over two million will, will need to be man mandatorily insured for NATCAT. This is uh, um, in process now on become of, of, of generating, of, of, of constructing a law that will, uh, will come to parliament. And um, I think that the government has also um, indicated that their view is to bring this two million threshold down to one million and lower so that it includes more businesses. This is again crucial because the smaller you go in Greece, the less insurance you find. The last item I wanna mention very briefly is that right now, um, is in Parliament and is under public uh, discourse, a law that will forever finish the story of the half a million to 700,000 uninsured cars that, that circulate among us with tremendous social and economic cost. Uh, motor insurance is mandatory, and, and with this law and the technology available, um, this will finish. Um, so uh, the association, and not only, there are many of us who work on that, uh, has done a lot of work closely with the state to, to make this law come to pass. Um, and, and this is a last point that is important. We are working closely with the state, with the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Economy, and others, 
to um, uh, discuss, present what the problem is, and try to find a solution. As I said, we need more and we need it faster, but there is progress being made. There are also discussions with, uh, in our opinion, not very spectacular, spectacular results on agricultural insurance and other areas. But anyway, at least there are some discussions even there. Now, a couple of more statistics. Um, in health, in 2021, the latest numbers, Greece paid 16.7 billion in total for health, of which 10.5 billion was paid by the state. 700 million was paid by us, the private insurance industry. And the Greek, the average Greek paid 5.5 billion in total out of his and her own pocket. This amount is twice the European average, i.e. the poor Greek pays on average double what his wealthier average European pays. And that is because only 15% of uh, Greeks have private insurance, one five. Now, I apologize because every time I come on this podium, I say this more or less the same, same statistic updated for a year later, but I will continue to do so because the problem is there. It's like we are running at a high temperature, we have a fever, and we have to keep reporting the fever until, until the doctor fixes it somehow. Um, and on pensions, ah, sorry, one moment, 15% tax on health insurance premiums, 15% tax on, to insure your home. We understand that the state, state has, in some cases, significant uh, revenues from these taxes, in some cases not very significant compared to the risk, but if you have taxes and no incentives, then people don't insure themselves. Last but not least, while there is an inverted demographic pyramid, and as you know, fewer and fewer people work and more and more people are in pension, a 65-year-old Dane who is about to retire has on the side 28 months of his last salary fully funded, whether it's private or public pension system. The average Greek has five days on a fully funded system on the side. You see the, you see the protection gap there. Um, the government has done in the first pillar a fully funded scheme. It's going to take a long time to create reserves there that are, that are going to solve the problem. So, as I said, the problems, per, the problems persist. We are here. We can help. We are talking to the state. We are talking to the international market. The international market is eager and able to help us. And I was very encouraged la yeah, last night during the parties to hear some very encouraging words from some of you as to the trustworthiness of the Greek insurance system in view of what happened with Daniel. In other words, the association collected data, provided credible data to their insurers, and their insurers having less uncertainty and then are then more able to help us with, uh, with covers next time. So, I spoke a lot, but this is my chance uh, to say a few things. Um, during this year's meeting, we have two very interesting sessions with distinguished uh, speakers who have come from abroad. And I want to thank them all, not one, but one, each one of you by name, just in the interest of time, but I really thank you for being here. Um, the first one, which will follow uh, today, uh, pertains to the global uh, protection gap. And the second one, which is at the Bracera Hotel tomorrow morning, is uh, on the Greek market. So before I give the floor to, to the dear Mr. Minister of Labor, I would like to also thank um, the organizations who helped this conference come to pass. So I want to help. Aaron, I want to thank Aeon Greece Reinsurance Solutions, Carpenter Turner, Eurolife FFH, Howden, SRS Group of Companies, 
as well as Inter-American for providing constant ambulance service and ergo for the meetings liability insurance cover.